Time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us to the charts. Here to take us to the trades, Achilles Larea is with us, founder, CEO, Larea Wealth Management here live at the New York Stock Exchange. You were looking for that Santa Claus rally and look, we're up nine weeks in a row. It looks like you got it. Um, how are you feeling now about we've just had this incredible run and now we turn into the new year? Yeah, it's amazing what's happening here. We're starting to see people taking profits. So we're going to see the market go down, pull back a little bit, correct itself a little bit. But I believe that the fundamentals are still in place to keep this rally going, although not to the extent we saw for the last nine weeks, but still a steady growth cycle. We're seeing more sectors joining the growth there, and we're also seeing technology just taking off to the stars right now. Yeah, we've heard a lot of comments pertaining, we were just talking about Dan Ives 20,000 for the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ composite, for example, had an incredible year. It was up over 43% in 2023. So let's get to Palantir, a name that one year is up 162%. Tell me about your thoughts on this name. Yeah, Palantir is one of these companies, you know, we were looking at Microsoft to continue the AI play, but we wanted something cheaper for our investors. So we're accumulating Palantir on a very limited basis right now. We're looking at the stock to make easily 18 to 20 percent. Mm. And that's being super conservative right wow. now uh, because it's in a sector of growth. This is a hot sector right now. But for how long? We think it's a long term play. We think it could easily be 18 to 24 months. And we're going to far surpass that number that we came in. They have so many uses for their AI, but more importantly, the the government and security uses those are really where we see the growth in this particular company and of course the, pli the private sector all right what do you think ben as you take a look at palantir i mean the incredible run but achilles is seeing further growth going forward uh, for the company and the stock yeah, Nicole, I think this kind of fits into the narrative that Achilles was talking about in terms of the bigger picture as well, right? Could see some short-term weakness here, but that underlying fundamental narrative here that's supportive of this rally we've seen is still a present here. And uh, taking a look here at the chart, we have seen a little bit of short-term weakness in Palantir. Uh, we came off the highs last week up around that $18 level, recently back down to around 16 You can see we're currently trading around 16.75 right now, down on the day by about 2% here. But uh, that's a, a look at a very range-bound type trade that's coming to play after a big rally up in the beginning of May. If you remember, we were trading around uh, $7 back in May. Earnings came into play. We rallied up into that sideways consolidation area that started in the beginning of June there and lasted really throughout the summer into the end of the year. Now, that spike on the right side of the screen there was up around 25. Let's dive into this chart here. Uh, Nicole, I want to show you what's going on here and why I think, again, that uh, the short-term weakness that we've seen isn't not necessarily uh, such a big concern here. You can see, as mentioned here, the high conviction trade throughout uh, this spring of last year and then the sideways consolidation. This is just overlapping rotational value being formed here. If anything, I think this is very bullish, especially when you consider what's playing out here as well. Look at this longer term, how we had been trending lower. The move that we just looked at off the May lows actually came after we kind of bottomed out around this $8 level. Taking out 12 here was significant. Once you got above that, you invalidated that trend lower here. So very bullish this one. I think very supportive of uh, the narrative that uh, Achilles laid out there with that broader market. Again, not so much specific to Palantir, but uh, definitely this chart is supportive of that bigger picture discussion. Yeah, and so so he sees some support there. I mean, you're talking about 18 to 20 percent, and you feel like you're being conservative for a long-term play there, right? Yeah, this is going to be a three to four, a three to five year time frame. We're also looking at a sector that is heavily favored right now, and it's in really it's in its infancy right now. So we see a long-term play that with some very bullish signals. Okay, next up, Caterpillar. So Caterpillar one year is up about 22. Percent. It's trading at 294. It's been on a recent uptrend and hitting 52 week highs as well. I see 299. Um, your thoughts there? 
Yeah, there's some great things going on with uh, Caterpillar right now. First off, is it a growth stock or is it a value stock? It's sure acting like a growth stock right now. If people forget that there's a dividend attached to yeah. this particular stock. But we're seeing growth in this particular company on a continuous basis. We saw that 20 plus percent last year. We're seeing continued moved up on the numbers right now. We're seeing some pullback right now, some resistance right now. But the long term trend for a company like this we're looking 8 to 12 percent. This is very conservative. And I don't mm. want people to forget that this is a conservative company. But the infrastructure play overall is going to help this trend that Caterpillar is going through right now. And it's going to do well going forward. I mean, you must have loved that winning streak. Remember, we saw the earnings and then you just saw it shoot up. It had uh, almost 20 percent gains in one month. What a winning streak that was. Um, what do you think here, Ben, when you take a look at this chart here? Well, Nicole, as traders, we're always reminded that uh, past results are not uh, an indication of future expectations. But I always say the trend is your friend, continuation more likely than change. And we're definitely seeing a well-defined trend of the upside in CAT. So along the lines of that bullish narrative, very supportive of that. When you look at the chart, you're going to see why. High conviction trade of the upside, sideways consolidation. Achilles mentioned how we just came off that high recently up around 299, back down to 293. We're currently trading slightly lower on the day. But let me show you what's going on here uh, because this is a pattern that we talk a lot about, right? High conviction trade of the upside, that vertical type price activity where you see higher highs and higher lows. And then we get into that sideways overlapping rotational price activity where we're currently consolidating around this 293 level. Now, let's take a step back because you're going to see this pattern repeat itself over and over again. This is why as traders that are looking to position with the trend, you're looking to buy into one of the lower extremes of these ranges, these value areas that forms, or buy an initiative type breakout. But basically, this is a bull type pattern here. You're looking to grab a hold of the horns and hope it continues. We're, again, currently balancing around 293 as long as we hold up above 260 on this hourly candle chart off of earnings when we were down around 223 going back to the beginning of November. Uh, uh, that was a big bull move up here and again still holding on to those gains. Taking a look here again as we take a step back and distance ourselves a little bit going back to 2020 you're going to see a similar pattern that high conviction trade to the upside sideways consolidation wash rinse repeat and then look Nicole appears as if we just went vertical here recently something to keep an eye on and in the beginning of the year but yeah. on all three time frames very bullish. Okay, so where do you think this one can head, um, especially as we just showed that vertical move? Um, at 293 today, uh, do you see 15% upside here as well? I'm looking at 8 to 12%. 8 to 12, You know, we're yeah. really conservative on this stock because its history hasn't been to show that kind of growth right, before. Right, yeah. So we got to be conservative. we got to pull back on our expectations. All right, and then there's Taiwan Semi. Um, semiconductors are always fun to watch. Your thoughts on this name? Yeah, uh, it, it makes our heart beat a little bit. It's like mm -hmm. Intel. When it does really well, it does right. really well. But then it, think of the whole sector. Uh, this is a stock that right now has, barring any geopolitical problems that we see in the region. I mean, there's all this talk about China invading Taiwan, and that is the big black cloud, I say. But even then, with a stock like this, we're looking at a decent double digit increase in a 12 to 18 month time frame. We're looking for an upside of more than 17% in that time. We believe that this trend with this particular stock is overall positive, and we believe that the sector, it's going to follow what the sector is doing. The sector is doing really well right now, and this is just going to trend upward for now. Oh, okay. So, likes the sector, but this one has uh, the upswing potential. So your thoughts here, Ben, on Taiwan Semi? You know, this is a lot like Palantir in many ways, short-term weakness, and uh, that's probably what Achilles was referring to in terms of what has investors a little bit uneasy in some of the intraday volatility we see. Concerns tied to China weighing on price activity as of recent, which you can see on this uh, more granular time frame. But as we take a step back, you're going to see long-term strength here. So again, short-term weakness, but a bullish pattern playing out when you go all the way back to the fall lows that we saw back in September around 88. Three well-defined areas of consolidation that formed at higher and higher levels. Currently balancing around 103, as we mentioned, some recent weakness, but still holding above 100. That's a key area, and maybe even more notable, I think, would be 98. If we were to take out that area again and spend some time below that, then you didn't validate this working assumption that we're trending higher, that value is moving to the upside. But let's step back here one more time and add a little bit 
uh, more time to this chart here. Now we're going back to the fall of uh, uh, last year again when we were trading around 61. You can see these areas of consolidation value that's moved at a higher, higher levels. You can see again even the move that we just mentioned off the October lows here from last year. I'm sorry, fall of uh, 2022 we're looking at here and uh, the move off the lows from last year. So uh, again, a significant move to the upside here, very much uh, in line. The technicals that is are uh, with that fundamental uh, narrative that uh, Achilles is laying out. All right. Thank you for that, Ben. And Achilles, final thoughts. Yeah, uh, this whole sector, I think the market as a whole, barring any interest rate moves to the upside, we should start to see the market move off. But don't forget that the Fed has indicated they may want to raise interest rates again. We have to be cognizant right. of that That's if we're going to make money going forward. I know everybody's betting on the six cuts, but I mean, it's still alive. They still have live meetings coming up even in January. All right, Achilles Larea, Ben Lichtenstein, the big three. First one of the new year. Thank you both very much.